Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. It's been a little while since we've made any kind of a hardware item here at Black Bear Forge, so today I thought we would take a look at making an H&L hinge. This is a fairly classic design for a door hinge. The L part goes on the door to reinforce the rail and the style and help hold everything together, and the H part usually goes on the door frame. They have to make these in pairs, a left and a right or a top and the bottom, to make sure that they go on all the sides of the door depending on what kind of door you're putting it on. This is something I did for a production run a while back. The customer budget did not allow for all forge welded hinges because typically the eye portion is forge welded to a strap. This corner would be forge welded together. It's not something that's typically done out of a single piece. But to meet the customer budget, I had these things laser cut out of eighth inch material, and that has all the pieces, and it really saves some time in making these. And to cut the price per unit down, I had a bunch of extras, so sometimes when I go to a show somewhere, a woodworking show, something like that, I'll make up a dozen of these or something and take them with me. And if I don't sell out, I put them on the Etsy shop. And it is better to make these in batches, so if you have some irregularity, you can kind of mix and match and get things that work well together, just in case the eyes don't fit perfectly. And we will talk about that before we get done with today's video. Now to make the eye roll up just a little bit cleaner, I do start by grinding a 45 degree bevel. And this helps it roll up and tuck in nice and clean and neat. And to do that, I'm just going to do it on the belt grinder. It's efficient and it's accurate. Now when you do this, remember that on the door, one of these will go in this configuration and one will go in this configuration, which means you need to put the bevel on opposite sides to roll that eye up correctly. There's going to be one left, one right, or one up, one down, however you want to look at it. You want to start with the bevel up as you wrap the eye. Keep looking at the eye and make sure it's wrapping up the way you want. I'm not tucked in as well as I'd like, so I have this tool here that I use to help that. And it helps if you put a pin in here to support the eye. A lot of fiddling sometimes with these. The more you do, the easier it gets. Just taking out some little lumps at this low heat. The shape of the hinge prevents me from driving the pin out over the pritchel hole, so I'm just going to bring it to the vise and do it right here at the vise. Now I just want to forge a bevel around the hinge, give it some character.
ahead and put a touch mark on here. This eye is coming out a little teardrop shape, so I'm going to go ahead and put the drift in there, clean it up a little bit, and see if I can save it. And of course we'll put the bevel on here like we did the other one. So really the forging portion of a set of hinges like this is pretty quick and simple. It doesn't take that long to do the eye. I do like to try and do them as much as I can just by hand and by eye without putting the pin in and without the little hardy jig that I use. And then I go to those things just to clean it up. And that helps develop skill. And if I'm doing a batch of these, by the time I get to the end, they're pretty darn good. And sometimes you put that pin in, give it a tap, shoots all the way through and you're just done. Anyways, the next step is to fit these together. Right now, those are the same and if you stack them one on top of the other, nothing matches right. So one of these needs to have the outer portion cut off, one needs to have the center portion cut off. I don't know if it really matters that much. And I wanna do this in fourths, so a fourth of the width in here, a fourth of the width in here, so half of the overall width is still attached. You could certainly cut this with a bandsaw, but I'll go ahead and cut it with a hacksaw, just because not everybody's got the little bandsaw. And we'll file that to clean it up.
So this one we're going to cut out the center section and remove that. Now to take this out, I'm going to use a chisel, a little one-sided chisel for this. I don't cut all the way through here at the anvil. I'm going to cut all the way through, put a soft plate down. Then we can just break that off. Now these are never perfectly straight. They do come out better if I do them on the little bandsaw. So there's always going to be a little filing to be done. I also like to run a drill bit through the eye. The same size as my pen. And I leave just enough to put a little head on either side of the pin stock here. Doesn't hurt to file a little bevel on the end of the pin so it goes into the eye a little easier. Now this hinge did not end up as a perfect fit. I would not typically send this out to a customer. But in interest of getting the video done, we're going to go ahead and assemble it. What I'll do usually with these is take each piece and match another hinge and redo them. But you can see how that works like that. In most cases, those won't open, just like tongs or any other joint. So that's going to need to go back to the forge and be heated up. So it's usually just easy enough to open that up. That one opened up nicely. Make sure it's flat. Check to see if everything is parallel. And we can do a little bit, maybe, to close this eye up where it's a little bit on the big side. You can't do much or it throws things off, but it's worth trying. I save it, it's a good hinge. If not, this one will just be a wall hanger to have as a sample. That just needs some holes in the straps. Well, that completes our H&L hinge. Like I say this one came out just a little bit rough and I probably would not send it out to a customer, although it is a little tighter now that we worked on it at the anvil. And while I'm not as proud of it as I would like to be because it's a little bit sloppy in the joint, it's a perfectly functional hinge and I'll probably find a use for it here in the shop or in the basement wood shop, something like that. When I make these in larger batches, any of these that one half doesn't come out quite right, I can still file, correct it, and then match it to another one. And by the time I get to the end, I usually don't have any extra parts, but sometimes I'll start with two or three extra hinges just in case. And as I mentioned previously, the more of these you do, the better you get at it. So if you're doing a batch of several dozen of these, by the time you get to the end, you're getting those joints pretty good right off the hacksaw. and There's very little filing to do. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.
Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your next order.